here is Angie's backstroke above the water. Anytime we shout up for backstroke, we want to make sure that you do have those toes set up right underneath the surface. Since we didn't utilize touch pads, I know it's really pretty hard, especially with having that metal band around the pool. You had to set up your feet probably about uh, five inches lower than what you really would have wanted to. So just think about that when you do a normal backstroke start and think about having those uh, feet about shoulder width apart. So as we uh, see you get set here, do a pretty good job of getting your back arch, getting that head back. The one thing you're doing is you're moving that upper body first before really pushing through with those legs. You want to think about pushing with your legs first. That way it's going to help drive your hips up. Anytime you pull up on the starting block and then let go, your body's going to go down. And so we want to be able to get those hips up and out of the water. So push first with those legs and then let go of the bar. Uh, we do have a little bit of a... Uh, Gap, but not too much in that streamline. I can see there's a little space. I'd want to see that tightened up a little bit more. And your head's breaking the surface here, and your arms not quite ready to recover. So make sure you're trying to uh, swim just a little bit sooner so that the timing works out a little bit better for the breakout. That would be just a little late. As we watch your kick, you've got a little bit of that knee bend in there. We want to make sure that you do keep those legs nice and long, so you're going to be able to kind of keep that kick a little bit stronger for you little long going into that turn you're really looking for that wall so make sure as soon as you get turned over there really get tucked up tighter uh, as soon as that head is pressing down we want to make sure that your heels are coming up right now you've almost got uh, your legs perfectly straight behind you if you can tuck them up as soon as your head goes you're going to be able to spin around even quicker as we look at that breakout you're breaking out right inside the flags you need to be able to really work on extending that a lot further so you're going to be able to get a lot more out of every kick underwater and be a lot more efficient. I'm doing a uh, pretty good uh, rhythm, getting a little bit of rotation in there. We do, as we finish through this area, we can see a little bit of turbulence up at the surface, and that means you're pulling in kind of an S-shaped pull. So as you're going just before that finish downward, you're pulling the water up towards the surface. You want to make sure that as soon as your arm enters up in front there, that you dig down just a little bit further and then press straight back with a little bit of a hand flip down at the finish of the stroke. As we see you come in for the finish here, doing a uh, really good lunge for the wall. Love the fact that you kept real uh, shallow and you didn't do the very big dramatic up and down. So that's a very good finish. Nice job. Here is Angie's backstroke underwater. See her. We can see that her streamline is not as tight as I would like to see. And we've got that little bit of a zigzag uh, up and down motion with those hands starting your dolphin kick up there. Remember that dolphin kick starts from your chest and works its way down. Everything from your shoulders on up does tend to move in that straight line. As we watch your first pull, especially on this left arm, you are almost perfectly straight throughout the entire thing. That means your arms are just making this giant circle. There's not much time in that circle where you're pushing directly back on the water to help propel yourself forward. So make sure when that arm enters the water here, you are wanting to pull back right away. But what we actually want to do is dig that arm down just a little bit deeper and then work on pushing back in that straight line. Get that arm bent real well. Make sure you're thinking about trying to dunk your friend underneath the water and keeping that nice high elbow to get that leverage and that ability to push him underneath the water. That'll help really get a much stronger pull. You do have a very strong kick as you're going through the water. We want to make sure you maintain that as you're going through your backstrokes. So you going through the turn here, not uh, necessarily utilizing the arms, and I know it's a little hard from this angle, but we do want to make sure that you're really working on pulling those hands up towards your face, past your head, and getting into that streamline as you're going through the turn. Again, need to tighten up that streamline. Your head is really down, so we need to make sure you're lifting that chin up, getting your head tucked back into that streamline. Again, you're able to see how we really need to work on digging down a little bit deeper so that we can keep those hands deep underneath the water and grab much more stable water. The water right there at the top uh, six inches or so, that's kind of what we call the garbage water. And so we want to make sure we are getting a lot uh, deeper than that. You do as we come through here. You're coming up, you're hitting the uh, surface of the water right there. So that's another example of why really want to make sure that we're trying to push straight on back with that uh, water. As you see going for the finish, really diving that head down. 
We don't need to duck that head back as nearly as far because your head is almost to the uh, bottom of the T there on the wall. Make sure it's just a quick little head snap and then get it going perpendicular right to that wall. So make that a little less dramatic and get that body so it's going into that wall in the shortest possible method, which would be that straight line. Nice job.